Hi everybody. In this video, let's take a look at using D5 to create a blue hour render. So blue hour is generally the time of day, either in the morning or in the evening, when the sun has not yet kind of come above the horizon or has just dipped below the horizon. Generally, the light it casts takes on a bluish color, yet you still have kind of the oranges from sort of residual light. And so it tends to make for a really beautiful photography shot. And so the question is, can we reproduce that in D5 render? Uh, how can we set up our render settings to try and have that nice mix of blue as well as still some of the warmth or orange light? Because those two colors are quite complementary. All right, let's take a look at this. This is a very basic scene. Uh, this is a SketchUp warehouse building that I found on the warehouse. Uh, I did not build this. Uh, whoever did build it, though, it was pretty cool. So props to you. Um, now, I've sent this over to D5, and I've set up a bunch of different scenes here. So the first thing I want to do is try and create our sort of blue hour shot using the geo and sky. All right, so I'm going to click on my geo sample here, and you'll see nothing has changed. So let's talk about the settings that we can utilize for this. We're just using the geo and sky and adjusting the north offset. I've turned off all of the weather for both of these scenes. So just the lighting, just exterior lighting. All right, the first thing you need to know for, at least from my perspective, doing the geo and sky to get this is the time. Now I found that oddly enough, seven, 11, so 11 minutes uh, past seven in the evening, seem to be the perfect time for me. You could also do this by doing this in the AM as well. It just, uh, logically, it just made sense to me to be like, yeah, let's let's do it at, you know, 7 11. All right, so let's grab this and bring it all the way down to seven, type in 11 and hit enter. Now, I'm gonna just hit refresh up here. That should take care of that. Now you'll notice it is blue, but it's not quite there yet but the sun is extremely low on the horizon and that's partially what we want. You'll notice that the overall sky has taken on a blue tint, which I think is really good. That's what we're going for. But you're getting this low level yellow right on the horizon line. And I think that's where we're gonna get a lot of the oranges from. All right, let's just go back to this. Now, the other thing to note then is these settings right here. These are oddly enough hidden, not really sure why they're kind of hidden. I think they're actually really important settings for the geo and sky. Right under north offset, you have the ability to open up another tab that allows you to adjust the longitude latitude, but more importantly, the sunlight intensity and the sun disk radius. All right, let's crank up the sunlight intensity. Now you may not notice a staggering difference, but you can see without it, that's what you're getting. So think of sunlight there as we're just dialing up that. And I'm gonna take this pretty much, I think all the way up. I think that looks good. Now the sun disk radius will determine the sharpness of the shadows in your scene. And I have nothing in here that's really casting a huge amount of shadows. So it's okay, we'll just take the sun disk radius and we'll take it up as well. Let's put it about 10. There we go. All right, and again, I'm gonna hit refresh over here. All right, so now we've got a lot of light in the scene and we've got a soft sun that's casting light. Now the next thing then is to go to the effects tab and I am going to turn off auto exposure and you can see the difference immediately. When we do that, the auto exposure is going to effectively add its exposure. So it's supposedly how much light is coming into the actual camera, but we want to have control over this. I believe D5 tries to do sort of a very balanced approach that will allow for interior and exterior shots, but you do want to turn this off all the time. You want to have control over how much light is actually hitting the camera lens. All right, we can leave that off and the exposure value right now is not too bad. Now I am going to increase the highlights and I'm gonna make the shadows just a little bit darker. Uh, I usually find just 55 will work a little bit better. Let's try that again. Yeah, 0 0.5, 5. I think that brings it closer a little bit to the sort of the, the darkness and the shadows that you get in a Lumion style render. And overall, the slope, the mid values we're going to leave as is. Now, the last thing we can do is adjust the white balance and just add, you can see the overall effect 
Taking it to the left adds more blue, taking it to the right adds more orange. And so we're gonna just move it just a little dash to the left, just a little bit. And when we do that, again, I think it's all not looking good. You can leave bloom on or leave it off. I usually turn it off. And then the last thing now is to tweak the exposure ourselves so we get the look that we're going for. And every shot is probably going to be different. You want enough brightness in there? I think that looks good. You could come in and adjust some of the other effects here. And there is also the uh, saturation slider that you could tweak if you wanted to get this look a little bit slightly stronger or a little bit more washed out. That's up to you. But even just adding a little bit more saturation, I think looks pretty good. Now, that's about as good as I think I can get this. Uh, maybe someone wants to comment in the comment section if you've got some good advice. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the look here. We've got a lot of blue light in the scene and we've got a lot of orange on the horizon. And you can also potentially rotate that too. But I generally find that you do want the sun coming in from some direction. Try not to put the sun, for example, behind using the north offset. You know, I don't know that that's going to look particularly great, to be honest. You get this huge sun disc. So better have it coming in from the side or have it coming at this angle right here. But all in all, I think that looks pretty good and I'd be pretty happy with that overall. All right, let's move on to the HDRI. All right, everybody, so let's take a look at the HDRI setup and how we get comparable look, but using a high definition range image instead. All right, so you can see here, we've opted for this early morning sky, which is a great starting point. I think it looks pretty good. And if we open up the additional settings that are here, you can see we now have options for skylight and background. Now this is kind of important. So the background is going to determine effectively how bright the HRI is depicted, but it does not determine the actual light in the scene, just really how bright the sky is. So we're actually gonna drop it way, 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 way down. And you can see now we're getting that look, that very dusky or twilighty kind of look. And then this, the skylight button here is actually going to determine how much light is shot into the scene. If you're a Lumion user, it's kind of like very similar to like the hyperlight effect. All right, so let's drop this properly low down and you can see it looks pretty good. Now, we've also taken the color temperature and I've moved it all the way into the blue. So the overall ambient light, again, if you will, that sort of hyperlight, if you will, is set to very, very, very blue. Now, the real thing that's important here is the sun. The sort of blue hour is a mixture of predominantly blue light, but also that orange that comes from the sun. What little sunlight is still kind of hitting or just kind of coming over the horizon. And so in order to facilitate this, what we need to do, after I move myself out of the way, is to engage this sun button right here. So here's my HCRI. You can see how little light is kind of coming into the scene here. We need extra sunlight, but by default, the turning on the sun with the HDRI enabled is set to follow HDRI. So what D5 does is it looks for the brightest pixels in your HDRI image and turns that into effectively the sun. That's where it positions the sun. So that means that if you rotate your HDRI a little bit, the sun will kind of follow. We don't want that. We actually want this orange light kind of coming from a different direction. And so I've turned on the sun I have cranked up the sun disc radius. So again, you want as soft a shadow as you can possibly get. And I have controls here for the sunlight intensity. You can see if I take it all the way to the right, it's super, super bright, it blows out the image a little bit. So drop it quite low. Again, this is the merest hint of sort of yellow orange light coming in. And then all you need to do is tweak the azimuth, which is really just the direction the sun is coming from. And uh, just ignore the altitude and just try and get it where it falls nicely on the building. And I think that looks pretty good. You're getting a beautiful contrast between the blues and the overall yellows. Now I have taken the sun as well to be extremely into the yellow, not quite fully, because you can see it does that, which kind of, bleh, not great, but just a little dash will give you a nice tint. Now again, we do have to tweak the auto exposure here. By default, you can kind of see just how bright D5 wants to make this scene or how balanced. And so when you're using their HDRI, I found you in this lighting setup, to, I had to really drop the exposure quite even way more than I normally would, way, 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 way down. 
And there you're getting a really nice look, somewhere around that late 40s into the 50s. Update my scene. And then we can also, again, tweak that white balance just a little bit. But since we've got the blues in there, I think that looks nice. All right, with that being said, I think that will give you a good starting point using either the Geo and SkyStator system or using the HCRI system. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the finished results. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video or if you found it useful, um, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video and feel free to comment and, you know, press the like button or the, you know, do the YouTube things. Uh, thank you so much and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.